Before lunchtime, uh, I'm Sherry Clauser, this is Denise Demisi, and we are from the University of Georgia. If you're not familiar, we are a land-grant institution in Athens, Georgia, about 35,000 students in a very small college town that is super awesome, you should come visit. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about um, our project, where it got started, uh, how we got our project funded, and our progress so far, and evaluation of the project so far. So you notice this face, you know this guy. Um, he came to visit the University of Georgia for a talk in March, and he got us all really uh, invigorated and excited about the idea of open educational resources. And we started thinking about if just one large lecture replaced, uh, replaced their textbook with open resources, how much we could save our students um, in dollars. And that was kind of an exciting realization, but we weren't really sure, even after his visit, where we should start. And then came along this opportunity. Um, in Georgia, there is a, an initiative called Complete College Georgia that is focused on helping students finish the drill, as our football coach would say. Um, getting through college in, um, in time and under budget, um, <laughs> which is tough. Um, so one of, the, um, one of the grant projects out of Complete College Georgia that really appealed to us was the Complete College Georgia um, Incubator Grants Program. And this program was looking for um, various types of projects, including um, changing learning environments, um, researching outcomes, and other types of goals uh, in this incubator project. Uh, we decided for our idea that we would uh, we would choose just one faculty member, like I said before, in one course, one large lecture, high enrollment course, uh, and we thought, you know what, if they had a $100 to $300 textbook, if there were 300 students, the math is, is just really staggering, as you saw in the keynote this morning. Um, so we did that. We wanted to, uh, oh, and if you want more information about the incubator uh, grants, you can go to bitly.ccga incubator. Um, so we assembled a team, we did get the grant, um, and we found a faculty member that actually was already considering an open stacks textbook uh, in biology, and she and her co-instructors did adopt this book for this fall, and they also convinced a fellow instructor, Tessa Andrews, who teaches the next course in the series. Um, so we have biology 1103 and 1104, non-majors courses, um, and they both uh, signed on. In, with their help, we found a graduate student, actually an instructional uh, uh, learning design and technology program. She's an instructional designer, uh, and she helped with the course redesign. Um, so both courses are using the open textbook. Uh, they did have a $97 uh, Discover Biology textbook that they replaced with the, um, the open stacks book. And we have been working with the faculty, and the faculty has been working with the GA and the course redesign. So here are the outcomes so far. Um, this year, actually, so this academic year, including fall and this coming spring semester, over 2,000 students will use this book. Um, and it's estimated that close to $200,000 will be saved um, by students in the course. So we are very happy to contribute to the goal of saving students $1 billion by uh, 2018. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the evaluation of the project so far. This is the first semester we're using this, so evaluation is ongoing. What we've done so far is a focus group with the four faculty members who are using the OpenStax textbook, and um, we are currently gathering data from the students through a survey. So we're going to start with the faculty and what we found, I, I think this quote so beautifully sums up a lot of what they had to say about the quality of the OpenStax textbook, which was, it wasn't perfect, but no textbook is perfect, so an imperfect free textbook is better than an imperfect expensive textbook. Um, they talked about, you know, any textbook they'd ever used had good things and challenges, and the same was true with the OpenStax textbook. 
but if you're going to have challenges, at least do it for the students for free. When they were talking about the features of the textbook, um, they all agreed that it was more bare bones. There weren't as many of those extra features that they're used to seeing um, bundled with the publisher's textbooks. But they also said that most of those things are kind of crappy anyway, so <laughs> it wasn't that much of a loss. We asked them about support. So we're from the Center for Teaching and Learning. And we wanted to know what support they got, what more support they could have used. Um, now, the uh, faculty helped choose the GA. And these folks are teaching 300, 600 students with no TA support at all. Yeah. <laughs> so. We gave them a full-time GA, and she helped them redesign the course, put it up on the learning management system, and we'll look at that in a minute. Um, they said that they would have liked to have one with more content knowledge who could field questions from the students. Basically, they wanted a TA <laughs> um, in addition to someone helping them with the course design, but they really appreciated having an instructional designer. Um, and one of the faculty members said, that this, this, she said, uh, she sent me a PowerPoint and said, here's the crap you're doing and this is what you should be doing. <laughs> now this is a, this faculty member is lovely and open and always interested in trying new things. So she took that very well. Always, anything in italics are direct quotes from the faculty. The faculty. faculty. But yeah, the quotes within that is from, is how she quoted the TA. Um, I suspect the TA didn't actually say this because I know the TA and she's very polite. But this was the faculty member's translation in her mind. <laughs> the TA said. Um, and then here, the thing at the bottom is this is what we're, I think, going to be struggling with. Is that she said that it was really nice having that dedicated TA uh, because of the massive way that she redesigned the delivery of the content of this course. It was really nice having that extra help. Um, and she said it was better than if we had had a series of workshops, for example. So this is something we're puzzling over as we're trying to figure out how to scale this up. So delivery, this is a really busy slide. But it is to demonstrate how they redesigned the delivery of the content. So in the past, it had been the syllabus would say, read these pages in your textbook. And then the students could go to the LMS and find other links to different things. And she said it was kind of, they didn't always know where to look and when they were supposed to go to these different places. So they reorganized it using a checklist. So we use D2L as our LMS, desire to learn. And so the entire class is organized a checklist. So they know that this is the week that they're working on this checklist. Um, and everything is linked from there. So there are the learning outcomes for this week, or for this module. And right there on the top left, that they would just, the students click that when they're done so they can keep track of what they've done. Um, there's the pre-class reading, so here's the OpenStax textbook links. Um, video tutorials, demonstrations, simulations that they can see online. So these are additional resources that faculty members are pulling in quiz, and then the PowerPoint slides from that lecture class. So they called it a one-stop shop, and that's what they wanted for the students. They could just go to one place. Yes? I'll, I'll wait till you're done. I okay. Um, so we asked them if they would do it again, and these quotes don't really represent, they, they all said yes. Yes, they would do it again. They would definitely keep doing it with the, um, the class that they're doing it with now. But they also said, well, if this was the first time I was teaching a class, I might want to use a regular textbook till I really knew what it was I wanted to teach. And they also talked about not, not all the faculty are as willing to innovate as these folks were. And they said that sometimes it's hard, and I've, I've heard a couple people mention this in other sessions, that sometimes it's hard to get support in the, um, within the department. Because it is a lot of work, and some, you know, I've got my book, I've been teaching it this way for 10 years, why should I change now? And then some random interesting comments. Um, 
They set up this Nook <laughs> Resource Center, loved it because it was totally accessible. And then this, the second one, I, I added. <laughs> Store, the off-campus bookstores come to them with cupcakes oh, when they're coming to get the orders for the textbooks. These folks teach, what, six, what was it, thousand wow. students a semester? So the textbook companies, the, uh, the bookstores are losing some serious money. And she said she thought he was going to snatch the cupcake right out of her hand. When, he <laughs> when she told him they were using OVRs. Oh, yeah. Yay! <laughs> okay, so now what did we learn from the student survey? So again, this is preliminary. We're still collecting this. Um, this was about 80 students have responded so far. They just opened it up the other day. This is a picture of the class. Lots of students. Um, so, to what extent do you agree with the statement, I have difficulty coming up with money to pay for my textbooks? You can see almost half agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. How much do you typically spend on textbooks each semester? 67% pay over $300 per semester. Again, consistent with what the research says, what I'm hearing from you guys at this conference. Um, and there, there are many, many, many questions, and I just pulled out a handful. Um, if you've ever made the decision not to buy the textbook, why? And they could answer to as many of these that apply. But 58% said it was because it was too expensive. Um, did you tell anyone that you're using a textbook? So we're kind of interested in word of mouth and you know that maybe public goodwill if they're telling their parents and maybe their parents are somehow influential and you know can spread the word that UGA is UGA cares about their students. Um, so 71% total parents, 43% uh, roommates, 50% classmates, 68% friends. So they're talking about it. Uh, this was surprising to me. How do you access the open sex? OpenStax textbook. Um, only 11% printed it. I, I expected that I think the faculty think that they're printing this out, but only 11% printed out. 67% use it on their computer or tablet. Um, this makes my heart hurt as someone who teaches about teaching and learning. 51% interact with the OpenStax textbook by reading it and trying to remember what they're reading. Um, Fourteen percent make notes or highlight or read. So some of them are doing more, but many, many of them are just reading and hoping to remember. So that that's a whole different conference mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, favorite things. So these were open-ended responses, and I just read them all and, and looked for themes. So these were the prevailing themes that I saw over and over again in these responses. Um, they love that it's free. That they always have it. Um, they can print it out if they need to. It's portable, light, and convenient. And they felt like it was easy to read. Lee's favorite thing, again, we saw this a lot. Um, students were having trouble with it loading slowly or not loading correctly. Um, the page numbers weren't always consistent depending on how they downloaded it or what device they were using. Um, people who just didn't like to read on their computer or talked about eye strain. Um, and then some people just like having that paper. Quality, uh, I was talking with Cherry about, this is like the most perfect bell curve I've ever seen. <laughs> it? it almost looks contrived. 75% um, said the quality was about the same and then equal amounts above and below. And then next step, so we're going to continue to gather this data from the survey and analyze that. On Monday, we have a focus group of the students, so we're going to look at this data some more and sort of flesh out the questions that we want to ask them and talk with them about. Um, we're going to have an interview with the graduate assistant who worked with them to find out more about what kind of support and what level of support she gave them. Um, we are very interested in scalability, and so this is what I've been trying to focus on a lot this week here is ideas for scalability. How do we help more faculty members make this change? Uh, we've, we're not necessarily a small center, but we are kind of, we sort of feel like we're at our limit as it is, so we want to do a lot more for them. 
and we're trying to figure out how to do this with the resources we have. Um, we are learning about a new initiative called Affordable Learning Georgia, which focuses on, um, according to their website, free and, what is it, affordable, affordable textbooks or resources. So we're gonna try and uh, focus on the free part, the open part. Um, but also, I've just learned so much about different resources through this conference that we're gonna be exploring. I told Sherry I have like 100 URLs I need to follow when I get back. Um, and then Sherry can mention the um, Georgia, the UGA Learning Technology Grants. So we have this grant program that is sponsored out of the Center for Teaching and Learning, and um, we just took the proposals, the deadline for proposals just ended, and we asked uh, the faculty uh, requesting funds to focus on OER, either the use of OER uh, in their project or the development of OER. And I would say about half of the proposals that came in uh, followed that advice. Um, and the ones that um, will be funded, any grants that will be funded, we will strongly encourage that they, um, they make use of OER or at the very least um, make any of their uh, results open and usable um, by other faculty members at UGA and around the world. Um, That's our deal. Oh, in the back, she really wants Yay. to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, you, will you, are you willing to share your survey, just the questions and the results, so, so we don't have to all develop our own surveys for our students? Certainly, and so this is how I developed the survey. I looked at, I tried to find as many existing surveys as I could about OBI, you know, about this, and there really wasn't much that I found. And so I came at it from, textbook evaluation, ebook, you know, everything I could think of, and sort of drew from all that to come up with what we did. And looking at it now, I already see questions that I'm, I would change for next semester, but I would be happy, happy to share that. Did you have to get IRB approval to do your survey? We did, we did get IRB approval. Yes. Um, the original grant that you got from uh, Georgia, what was the size of that, and then what also are your learning technology grants? Um, the Complete College Georgia Bank grant was for $25,000, and we used that to fund the graduate assistant. Um, and then our learning technologies grants are a cap of $25,000 as well, and they cannot be used for graduate assistants because of the source of the funding, but they can be used for student workers, consulting fees, um, and uh, hardware and software. Okay, we are colleagues in the yes. USG. <laughs> um, in the newly formed University of North in Georgia. The newly formed University of North Georgia. Georgia. And my question is about staffing and resources because, you know, we, we, since we are one of the institutions that has been consolidated from two separate institutions, um, <coughs> resources is a big question for us and um, I've been thinking a lot about partnerships since I've been here at this conference. Um, I'm the Dean of Libraries at the UNG and so um, I'm curious to know how big your staff is in your Center for Teaching and Learning because that seems to me to be an obvious collaboration and I know that's something we're looking at. I mean we have one one person um, with an assistant in our Siegel office. So. We have a very wide ranging mission at our center, so giving you the total number at the whole center might not be helpful, but mm -hmm. we do have five faculty, so Denise and I are faculty at the center. Um, we have a coordinator for emerging learning technologies, a coordinator for uh, faculty development and recognition. Um, a coordinator for TA, TA programs, yeah, TA development, TA, TA development <laughs> programs, um, and of course our director. So um, the five of us plus our director are the ones that have put in bits and pieces, or will be putting in if we haven't, you know, <coughs> grabbed people, any of those six people to work with us. We we will be uh, shortly. Um, so that that's where we are, but. I'm sure we could find ways to collaborate. We could come up there and, and talk to uh, your staff. Um, are you participating in the Affordable Learning Georgia? I am, actually. Okay, um, maybe we can talk about that over lunch. Yeah, <laughs> I've just recently been uh, 
kind of drawn into that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but I mean that we've just been we've been thinking about our partnerships within the institution and obviously externally as well. And um, just knowing about kind of your size and structure is helpful for what we we may need to move forward toward. Do you have a question? Yeah, I, I did. <coughs> I, I do want to ask it. Um, it's it's not one of the big big picture questions. It's more of a me actually teaching a course. I don't get one thing. So you showed a slide <coughs> that said there was there was good response to this checklist, right? Right. Okay, this is what we're going to do. This is going to do. How is that different from a syllabus? So I mean, the, so my syllabi have evolved over the years to become pretty darn detailed. Right. Yeah. I don't think it's different. I think her, her thought behind it was they're going to be online for the um, for the book. You know, they're going to be they're going to have their computer out. They're going to be online. So just put it all in one place instead of having them have to get out the syllabus. And, you know, that it's all one place where they can keep track of it. I don't think it's necessarily different. It's just uh, fundamentally different. I think it's just that's the way it made sense for them to organize it. I'll add, though, <coughs> excuse me, I'm the uh, administrator of our LMS, but also a uh, desire to learn. And I will say we have had great feedback about these checklists from students that, and if you think about your own life, if you like to make checklists, that action of checking something off is very rewarding. And the faculty member can then, if they want to, go play Big Brother and see what's been checked off. Now, of course, it's honor system and could have not read those learning objectives and went ahead and, and checked them off. But if you think about sitting down with your students for um, advising, and maybe they're not doing so well looking at the checklist, maybe not so helpful if they have checked everything off, but if they haven't, then you can go back and say, well, you know, maybe this is part of the reason you're not doing so well. So there's, there's that little bit that may be helpful as well. Yes. Um, are the faculty members teaching these courses planning on using similar types of assessments as they have in previous sections, and if so, are, they planning, are you planning on doing any like correlation studies for student success based on OER sections versus the traditional? We are going to look at that. I don't. I don't anticipate the dif there to be a big difference, but we are going to look at that. That ties in. With the Has there been any anecdotal feedback on student performance because uh, the, uh, the students being more or less likely to read the textbook and that sort of thing? Have you heard anything about? Can you speculate on what student performance might be doing? Is it the same? Is it better? Is it worse? And remember, you're on camera. Right. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, as I say, I realize this is more than progress, but I would be very interested because. Yeah, honestly, I couldn't say. Um, and I'm, my mind's going through the, the uh, survey to look for questions about um, if you're more likely to read or if you're reading more in this course. And I, I can't remember exactly what all the questions are, but I think that is a, it's a really good thing that we should consider. Do we have time for one more question? Go ahead. Okay. Um, you said they were already thinking about an open, an open textbook. Do you think it was necessary for this assistance for them to adopt it at this time? And do you have a plan for targeting other high enrollment classes? First question, um, talking with, with Peggy, she said that she did not have time to do all the things that he did. Um, she said it, it just wouldn't have been possible without that help. Um, she said they are, they're already committed to summer work. They're, they didn't have time to do all the extra stuff. So in her mind, she needed that. Um, the next steps, we're still formulating. I can't tell you because we're we're we are gathering information right now, and but we're taking ideas. So if you have ideas for scalability, uh, we're all yours. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much, you guys.